What if you could set up a Kubernetes cluster on AWS, deploy a container, expose it to the world, and do that all in 10 minutes? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that from scratch. And the secret is not using YAML, not using the AWS console, but using the power of programming languages. To follow along, here's what you'll need. An AWS account, obviously, because we're using EKS, Python 3 installed on your machine, um, an editor of some sort, I'm gonna be using VS Code, and most importantly, Pulumi, right? Pulumi is what's gonna let me do this in Python, uh, you could also do this in TypeScript or in Java or in C-sharp, but I'm going to be using Python today. Let's get into it. So in a new folder that I've set up, I'm going to do Pulumi new AWS Python for my template. I'm going to call this project Cube Kitties. Um, I'm going to use the defaults here, dev stack. I'm going to choose pip. For my region, I'm going to do CA Central 1 because I'm in Canada. Keep my latency down. Uh, it's going to start installing all the dependencies into my virtual environment. It'll give it a second to do that. Then you can see my project is ready to go. And I'm going to open up my code editor here. It's created a bunch of files, but what I care about is this is this Dunder main. And in here, I'm going to start putting in my code. First, I have my imports to copy in. Then I'm going to set up a VPC. I'm going to call it EKS VPC. Next, I have this EKS cluster. So I'm bringing this in from this Pulumi EKS namespace. And this is a component, so it's made up of a number of resources. That just makes it easier to set this up because there's a number of things involved. And this abstracts it. Uh, that's the beauty of code, right? Then I'm going to refer to my VPC here. See, that's the ID of this up here. Next, I'm going to set up my instance size. So I'm going to use a T3 micro. This is just a demo. Desired capacity. I'll, I'll go with two. These are just demo sized items. You choose whatever works for you in your use case. Then I'm going to set up this Kubernetes provider. I'm going to explain what that is shortly. And then I'm going to export. So I want to get back out basically my cube config for this EKS cluster I'm going to set up and my VPC ID. With that done, right, go to my terminal and I do a Pulumi up. It's going to give me a preview of what it's going to create. You can see the power of the component here. There's a lot to make as part of the CKS cluster. There's a subnet, there's the cluster, there's security groups, there's roles. I don't have to worry about all that because I'm using this component that groups them. 62 resources, in fact. But yeah, let's hit yes. It'll start creating this stuff. You can see it's creating things in parallel as much as it can. Obviously, not everything can be created in parallel. Some things refer to others, like the NAT gateway. And you can see as it slowly sets up all these resources. There, it's done. Now I want to get this cube config so that I can poke around. So um, I'm going to use Pulumi stack output. And I'm going to write this to a file, my cube uh, config. Then I'm going to export that into an EMV for my tools to use. Right? Then Let's use kubectl. Let's take a look at our nodes. See, there we go. Boom, we have two nodes and they are ready. Next, let's look at our services and our namespaces here. So you can see we have two namespaces, our default and our cube system. Makes sense. That's what I would expect at this point. Now, uh, let's use my favorite tool, k9s. So in k9s here, we can see a list of the namespaces. We have all, we have default. Um, if we go into our default namespace, there's nothing running, right? We haven't actually asked it to set everything up yet. We can see here the, the system stuff like cube proxy, like DNS, but we don't actually have any pods running. So that's our next thing to address. So we have this Kubernetes provider, right? That we brought in from this Plumi Kubernetes namespace. And that's what's going to let us to um, get our Kubernetes manifests in place. So first... We're going to set up a label for my cat app, which I'll call cat app. Then I'm going to set up a deployment. My deployment, I will call cat deployment. And then I'm going to have this spec. Now this structure of the spec is going to be in Python. But if you're used, if you're used to um, Kubernetes manifest, it's going to kind of follow the structure you would expect from YAML, except here we can do it nicely in Python. So I'm going to set up two replicas. I'm going to use my label. This is my image, um, AG Bell, my random cat app. So that's in Docker Hub. 
That's where my image is. I'm just using latest and it listens on port 8080. That's going to be important for this second step, right? So now I'm going to set up a service with a load balancer and call this cat service. I use my app label again, right? And then for my spec here, I'm going to have port 80. I'm going to map that port 8080 to port 80. It's a lot of 80s so that I can actually access it. Then I need to export this service. Basically, I want to know what the load balancer's host name is. So I'm going to export that, right? And with that in place, I can run Pulumi up and deploy these changes. So do Pulumi up. We get this nice preview here. It's looking at what resources it has, doing a comparison, doing a diff and seeing, okay, look, we have a new output cat service URL. We have a new deployment and we have a new service. We can also see the details here. If we look at details and see exactly what it's going to change, but let's go to yes. Let's roll these out. And that's going to take a moment. You can see here in the info what it's doing. But once that's done, we can go back to my K9s, my favorite tool here. And we can see, look at that, there is our cat service. We can click into it. We can see we have two instances. We can see, right, they're each running on a different IP. Those are our two nodes. I can click in here on the first one. I can see the logs. Uh, it looks like I'm using Flask in development mode. Not great. <laughs> Uh, go into the second one, see the logs there. Perfect. So everything's running. That's awesome. Right. And then if we take that URL, we put it in the browser. Here's the moment of truth. Will it work? Bam. There's a cat. Right. So there is my cat service um, working. Right. As fast as we want them. Look, <laughs> there is just a lot of cats in this Kubernetes cluster. I don't know. This is funny for me. Maybe not for you. Uh, so there, our service is running. And that's awesome. So now the next thing that I like to do is I'm going to separate these out. So I've created a new folder, EKS cluster. I'm going to move my existing code into there. But first, I'm going to take out all this deployment stuff we just set up. Because I'd actually like to separate some of this out. I'll show you what I mean. Because I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it workloads. And in that, I'm going to change to that. I'm going to do Pulumi new. and go through this whole process again with AWS Python. And this one I'm going to call my kubekitties workload. I'll do same, use pip, I use CA central one, right? And in this workload project, I am going to put the actual Kubernetes manifest. But first I need a way to refer to my EKS cluster. So I'm basically separating things out into two layers. So I'm gonna use what we call a stack reference here uh, here's my EKS stack cube kitties, right? I'm pulling in my cube config, which I'm going to pass to the Kubernetes provider. And then we're going to put in the same details, right? Same deployment as before, same service as before. And now we just have our one export, right? So now I can do Pulumi up with this new split structure. And yes, we're setting up our cat service, our cat deployment. And this is just nice, right? Because now we have kind of our base infrastructure, our EKS cl cluster. And then our workload, where we put our actual Kubernetes changes that change more often. So just it makes sense to split these things out and see it's working. Look at that. We have our cats running in this new split structure. But so you may be asking, wait, what if I am actually used to this YAML structure that we see here, right? What if I like doing my Kubernetes manifests um, in the styler? I just already have these written. Well, let's adapt to that as well, because that's not an uncommon scenario. You already have these manifests written or you just are used to using them, right? So now I, I've cleared out my service and deployment definition, but I have my stack reference. And now I have everything in those YAML files. So I'm going to use this config file, right? And I'm going to pass it the path to that file. And then I can do the same for the second file. The ordering does matter. Um, and this way I can use that structure of the existing manifest. And I need to change my export a little bit. But this should work out exactly the same. If I go to my terminal, I do pull me up. We have some changes here, right? We can see we're creating a new deployment, new service. 
And then we give that a moment to update. And let's see if it worked. We'll use our new URL. Bam, they're working, right? Look at this. This is awesome. These just make me laugh. I don't know. Maybe you're not a cat person, but please forgive me. All right, so the next thing that might come to mind is I have these existing manifests and I'd like to actually convert them over to Python because this Python that Adam showed really looked nice. So it is possible to do that as well. You can kind of piecemeal move over as, as you go, right? The way I would do that is I would take my YAML here for my deployment. I would go to Polymi Copilot and then I'm going to ask it to convert, right? So can you convert this to Python? Polymi Copilot is an LLM. It's, you know, it's not always a hundred percent, but it does a great job of converting this over. And then I can just take this code and copy it back. Right. And then I'm slowly moving over to a programming language. I can do the same here, right. For my service definition, I can take those two and I can copy them back. I might also have CRDs, right. And if I want to convert them, we have this great tool CRD to Pulumi, which will give you some nice type checking, but, but look at this. Once you do all that, you get cats in your Kubernetes cluster and it works, right? All right, there you have it. KubeKitties up and running in your own Kubernetes cluster. You know, the best Kubernetes service ever. Uh, if you want the code, if you run into any issues, if you want to make a dog version of this, um, if you want to just see more examples, please drop a comment. Let me know. I'll try to answer all your questions. Uh, if you want to try this out yourself, head over to Plumi.com and give it a shot. Thank you.